Though the evidence itself has not been revealed, U.S. intelligence is claiming to have proof of China manufacturing nuclear weapons, a blatant infraction of international treaties. China has made an unmitigated denial of the charges, restating the belief that diplomatic talks with China continue to crumble. U.S. military forces are mobilizing towards the anticipation of possible hostilities. China again denies any involvement in Kombeng Nikolaz's... Oh, my God. Broadcast through the Internet just minutes ago. Cannot allow my nation to be subjected to the blatant international despotism of the United States or the cronyism of its allies. The world is not yours alone. And the soldiers you sent into it are all equally guilty of American fascism. At 5.30 p.m. Greenwich Standard Time, the United States soldiers captured in a just war against their motherland will be executed. Their deaths broadcast for the world to watch. Fisher, we're getting close to war. Nicolaz kills these men on live broadcast, we're sunk. Are we worrying about the broadcast or the murders? For now, the broadcast. It'll buy us time to stop the killings. Nicolaz is broadcasting from an antenna on the roof. That's your first objective. You'll find the rest on your opsat. What's up, everyone? Sinistrans here, one back at you. This time with Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. It has been about a month, I guess, since we have actually uh, played this game with all the new games that have come out in the past month I haven't had a chance to actually do anything so here I am finally and uh, just for you that do not know this is a complete stealth walkthrough for this game perfect 100% non-lethal as much as I can as well as awesomely awesome yeah Carol, this is Badri. the landmines are in place make sure nobody without the polarized thermal sensor enters the courtyard so one thing I loved about playing this mission was just the fact that it had pretty much everything you need. As you can see here, we've got mines on the ground. So we definitely want to keep away from certain areas. So if you follow the, the path that I do, pretty much you're going to be fine or whatever. It, it's set up to where there's pretty much only one path that you can actually go in order to make it by this area without alerting enemies or, you know, blowing your ass up. So just, you know, pretty much follow what I do here. It's self-explanatory. Although it's really fun because you got a, a couple of different hazards. You've got enemies that are actually on the little catwalks above. You also have the lights that are, uh, you know, shining in different areas, kind of uh, on a rotation, as well as the mines that you cannot walk on. And then not only that, but you also have to worry about how fast you walk, because you could set off anything if you uh, walk too fast. Now, you're not going to really set off an alarm, but you're going to alert guards that something's going on, and therefore they will come and look in your area, so then you'll have to get out as soon as possible. So it's just easier to take your time, not really worry about it, and just have fun with it. Alright, so this part was very, very fun. I love this kind of like off and on, you know, uh, kind of timing your movements so that you're not making too much noise and that you're going at the right time. It's very fun to do. And as you can see that uh, the main boss is actually right down there. If only you could take him out right now and kind of end everything, but that's not what I you do. I all identifying details stricken from the room. Keep the lights off of the walls. Give them fuller eye lights. We need to clearly see their faces when they die. Where's our sound man? Make sure we're close enough to hear prayers. So pretty much it's like any type of movement, any noise whatsoever will get you caught. You've got to be crouched the whole time. And I'll tell you this definitely, uh, when you come from the, the positions of where you're up and you got to jump down, make sure that you land crouched. If you do not, uh, you'll pretty much set off. You get two chances. Uh, one time he just says, is there something on the roof? And the guy says, ah, no, it's probably some rats. But then if you do it again, then it's like, let's go check it out! And then you're pretty much screwed from then. So that was horrible bad guy impressions, but uh, eh, I try, you know. What the hell just happened? The broadcast antenna's down! We've got no outgoing signal! We're under attack! The Americans are here! 
They've taken out the broadcast antenna. Get Nikolods out of here. I want his helicopter airborne now. I want a squad of technicians with an armed escort on the roof and repairing that antenna. I want the Americans found and killed. Yes, sir. Sounds like you shook things up pretty well, but it's only going to buy us a few minutes. Find those soldiers, Fisher. So obviously there's going to be some enemies coming out this door here. So just go ahead and wait behind it, wait for one of them to pass you by, and you should be pretty much good to go. I never had any problems getting through this, you know, right here. Now you could go left and go down the stairs, and you can actually get to a computer if you want to, but I was just like, ah, whatever. Now sometimes this guy can actually see you here. Definitely do not press yourself up against that wall to the left. Just kind of hang out and just wait for him to pass you by. And I also recommend a good place to save right there. Estimated departure in. Now, before, the way I used to do uh, my Splinter Cell walkthrough, whatever you want to call it, was it uh, I tried to do the best as I could going just straight through it without screwing up. But uh, in the later missions, it's very difficult to do that. So you definitely want to make sure you save your game quite a few, or uh, quite a bit. That way it helps you out a little bit. We're gonna see if we can get the drop on this unsuspecting guard here. Now you'll notice that there are lights in this area, but you cannot take any of them out. So the best bet is just to go ahead and air full around this guy and uh, walk up to him, knock him out, and try to get him out of the hallway as quickly as possible. There is a guard that patrols the area. He will be coming back through here. So you definitely wanna get the body out of way as soon as possible. If you don't, you can actually kind of maybe even lure the guard. You can leave the body in the middle. He'll come to investigate, then you can knock him out easily. There's so many different ways that you can do it. Uh, I found it best to just go ahead and hide the body. That way I can just get the sneak attack and not get any type of uh, what's going on alarm or anything like that. He's just checking his locker, so it's really easy to get uh, the sneak on him. But now we've actually taken care of the whole area that's right here, so there's pretty much no one else right here. And uh, you can freely access the computer or check around a little bit before you move on to the next section. There are, I think, two more missions left in Splinter Cell. I will be trying to finish them up by this weekend. Hopefully I'll be able to do it. I think I will be able to. Uh, they're not long. This is Nikolaj. Kill the American soldiers. Take them to the studio and kill them. We'll release the footage whenever we can. Tell Theron we are moving ahead. I'll retrieve the Ark. This is Gringo. I want the American soldiers prepped and in studio. The executions are going forward as planned. Yes, sir. What the hell? Where are you keeping the American soldiers? Gringo will kill me. He's not as creative as I am. Where are they? Ow! Oh. Oh! Where? The basement. Where's Gringo? He'll murder you. He'll kill you all. Where do I find him? He'll find you. Kill me! That was Gringo. He wants us to escort the soldiers to the studio. You copy that, Fisher? The executions are going forward. I heard. We got any more diversions? Your gun's full of them. Make sure that escort doesn't reach our troops. So I'm recording this after watching the brand new footage of Splinter Cell Blacklist. Very disappointing to see that Michael Ironside is not back as Sam Fisher. It was nice to see him in the making of video. They kind of, uh, he'd explain a little bit how the way that the graphics are going and the way that the game is being made, it's all going to be mocap by the, uh, pretty much like the Uncharted game. You know, the actor does the acting and he does the voice. Now the character that they chose, Eric Johnson, is actually from Smallville, so I know who the guy is, but it's kind of weird to see a guy that that young playing some 55, 56 year old guy. The broadcast. It's not our place to question. Let's go. But it's pretty much just like, you know, the character kind of needs to get younger and younger, that way people are still want to play him. So I can understand where they're coming from, but there's no reason why they couldn't have had an actor do that and then just added Sam's voice. It's worked well with all the other games. It would have worked just fine with this. 
Michael Ironside is pretty much as much Sam Fisher as this game is, or he's pretty much, he is Splinter Cell, you know? Without him, I just, I just do not see I can feel as much for the character as, as I would want to, as I feel in this game and all the other games that came out with him. His voice, just the way he, he, he's just bigger than you could ever imagine for a voice character, you know? He's, as soon as you hear Sam Fisher, you know you know it's Sam Fisher, and now it's just going to take some time to get used to. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad game. It's probably going to be an amazing game. It's going to be, I'm sure, stealthy and all the great things that you can do. It's just not going to be that 100% classic Splinter Cell, you know, with Micro Ironside. But you got to move on and uh, have fun. You know, it's just it's just how it is. People get older. People can't do certain stuff. You know, things got to change. So you just got to kind of live with it. So, alright, so this next part up here is very tricky. Uh, you can very easily get caught in this area. Now, as you notice, um, I had to turn my thermals on because this whole area right here is nothing but like a freezer. You pretty much can't see two feet in front of you. So you really got to be careful, you got to be cautious, you got to pretty much take out everybody to get by. And you also want to make sure you hide the bodies very well. If you do not, uh, by the time you get past this stage, you're, you're going to get caught. There's going to be an alarm going. And since you guys know that my whole walkthrough is a no alarm, no health damage kind of non-lethal walkthrough. It's very, you know, there's nothing I can do but try to, you know, do every take everybody out in this area at least. Now it's it's also very weird because these guys can see you pretty easily. It's like uh, if you would turn off, if or should I say, if I would turn off the thermal vision right now, I wouldn't be able to see anything. But yet these guys can still see me. So I I tried doing this a couple of different ways. I tried making it around guys, you know, without alerting anyone. I was able to get all the way over to here, but it's like as soon as I climb this right there, that guard sees me even though, you know, it's pretty much impossible to see two feet in front of you. So you just kind of got to work with what the game gives you. Now there's like three little sections here that you'll go. Each one has some certain amount of guards in it. The only thing that sucks about using this is uh, sometimes it can be a little difficult to find out if you're around a corner or not. I, I remember when I was, uh, you know, going through the game and stuff, a couple of times I would try to get around a corner in this type of vision mode, and I kept getting stuck on the wall just because I couldn't really see where the wall was as where Sam is, so watch out for that as well. But pretty much every guard gives you an opportunity to take them out, and as long as you're a, a semi amount of distance away from an enemy, then you'll be able to freely do this without, let's say, that guy's seeing you right there. Find the darkest spot you can to hide the bodies and then you should be good to go without uh, setting off any alarms. This wasn't a hard mission at all. It just took me... I would say the whole thing took me about four hours to get through. Uh, just because of the fact that I haven't played the game in a month so I had to get used to the controls again. And I was trying to be a perfectionist, you know. I didn't want to set off anything. I didn't want to do anything. The ending is what really was kept pissing me off because I, I kept, I was trying to decide, okay, it, I have to kill people. It, pretty much this is the, the part of the game where it forces you to kill. And I, I told, you know, you guys in the very beginning, I did not want to kill anyone. The whole thing about Splinter Cell is you have the choice to do what you want with the game. You can go non-lethal or lethal. Now this, I believe, and I'm not sure about uh, Pandora tomorrow, but I know definitely in Chaos Theory, that you have the option to kill or not kill. You don't have to kill a single person. It gives you a lot more options in this game. But here it kind of just forces you, hey, you got to take them out. You also definitely want to watch out for the turrets. Now this guy is a little bit tricky. If you try to go by him when he is uh, moving around just a little bit, he will see you and then you will get caught. And you have to do that whole thing over again. So it's all about timing, it's all about making sure they're not looking in whatever direction. Again, as I've said in many videos before, land softly. If you don't, you're always alert enemies. And now I tried a couple of different ways to take this guy out. I tried just uh, kind of getting his attention, jumping back up where I was climbing and see if I could jump on him. But he was able to see me up on the top, so that obviously didn't work. So I just went for the simple method. It gives you a bottle to throw, use it. Now since there is like no place in this last section that is good to hide a body, as you can see I'm, I'm looking around here trying to find a place 
where the meter is all the way down, but there's just not really a place that it's low enough that I feel comfortable. And you would think right here would be perfect, but as you can see, it's still almost like halfway. So we're gonna go ahead and deactivate the turret, and we're gonna take him back to where we put all the other guys. Now you may notice that this is not a live commentary as all the other Splinter Cell videos were pretty much. The reason for this is I recorded this late late last night. I had um, finished up Ghost Recon and everything. I was watching some movies with Carrie and I stayed up pretty late to do this because I knew you guys wanted some Splinter Cell and I wanted to get it out to you as fast as I could. But um, you know Carrie's been sick lately and I didn't want to wake her up. I didn't want to do all that as I was doing everything in bed so I just decided not to worry about it and add the commentary later. Plus you guys said that you like kind of that after the fact commentary and I have to say I do too because I kind of know what's going to happen up ahead. Uh, you know granted it's always fun to have that those lines where it's like you don't know what's going to happen next and you know you can come up with some cool shit but uh, you don't have to do it all the time you know sometimes it gets boring to say like a glove all the time or you know stuff like this you know I'm trying to come up with new ideas and things like that I want to open my channel up a little bit more. You guys know the games that I like to play. That's never going to change. Uh, I had told you guys that I might do a lollipop chainsaw walkthrough. Uh, I actually did buy the game, but <laughs> I haven't been able to take it away from Carrie. She's been playing that thing. She says she loves it. But I just don't think it's the kind of game that I would want to do a playthrough for. I'd probably will play a little bit of it, but not like actually just, you know, put it out. I don't need to make money off of every game that I play just to do it. I only want to put the games that I enjoy and that I love on here so you guys can get the fullest kind of uh, know exactly if you want to buy them. I want to put that in there for you guys. Now I was having a little bit of trouble here. <laughs> uh, you're in a very, very tight space and I could not see where the damn hole was. I know that's a, uh, that's a wrong thing to say, but <laughs> it took me a while even to figure out how to jump out of here. So even the, uh, even the Splinter Cell fans have problems sometimes. But it's amazing how like uh, short this actual level is. I thought it was going to be a little bit longer. Granted, I said it took me four hours to complete, but once I compiled the footage and everything like that, you know, it was only like under 30 minutes. So this is actually going to be where the game saves and it's going to take you to the last portion of it. Now, I know most of the time I've been doing videos where they've all been like you know 20 minutes you know two or three videos for Ghost Recon for each chapter this time you know as a Splinter Cell I'm doing pretty much one video is one you know mission so do exactly what I do here get as quickly as you can up against here I tried many many different ways to do um, to do this section I try to do it where I'm not killing anybody or I take out as few as possible but this is like the best method that I found you got to go ahead and take out these guys just because it makes it easier and you'll see why very shortly up ahead now, as you can see I've got my diversion cam going so I'm definitely going to be doing some gassing up ahead now granted you could probably get through this section without taking this guy up but since you're gonna have to deal with the turret up ahead it's best just to not alert anyone so I go ahead and take pre pretty much everybody right here out, just so I don't have to worry about that later. But make sure you hide their bodies really good. Like I said, alarm triggering is very, very easy if you don't hide the bodies in the black. Now I did this section a couple of different ways. I tried where I did a sticky camera against the wall, knock the guy out, hurry up, take out the light, run past, and knock him out. But I found that that actually, uh, because of this turret, it was almost impossible for me to pick the body up hide it and then get by the turret because I already took out the light and once the light is out the turret automatically shoots at the light so you're able to get right by so I just decided to go over this method instead and use the sticky camera and take him out past the turret that way I can actually hide the body in one of the darker areas and I don't have to worry about the turret because I can just take the light out run past the turret will not shoot you now, everybody that I've seen that played this game, they did a great job with stealth. They did a great job stealth on this part. But what they did, what I've not seen yet, is anyone not take any damage. That is why I went for this, and I wanted it to be different. I wanted it. So far, I've seen that I'm the only one that's not taken any damage in any of the levels. 
So yes, yeah, so you can see the turret is uh, going off and all that kind of stuff, but no one's alerted, everything's good, all the enemies were taken out. The other guards just didn't notice, didn't care, whatever. Each section, there are a lot of different ways that you can do each part. So you don't have to do it my way, you know, kind of... It, the game saves, you know, you can always go back and find different ways. That's what I love about Splinter Cell, is there's always more than one way to do something. So I'm going to do the diversion camera this time, I'm going to take out these two guys. Now, when I tried this before, I actually noticed that if I would rush up on these guys while they had the gas on them, the gas would actually affect me and it would take my damage down. And since I'm going for that no damage walkthrough, uh, you kind of want to wait until the gas, you know, dissipates and then, then come in, knock them out as quickly as possible. That way you're not taking any damage. Again, always make sure you're hiding the bodies in the, uh, the most invisible sections that there are. Now, to the normal naked eye, anybody would be able to see these guys, but since the game, you know, it's a game or whatever, as long as you're below one, I usually like to think I'm safe if I'm below one. But we got all these lights that we're going to have to take around here because we got this turret that we need to get by, and it is not an easy turret to get by. So I always recommend taking out all the lights here. Even taking out all the lights doesn't help you get by it, but what it does, it just gives you that little bit of advantage when you're actually going to the middle point, as I'll show you here. And you would think, okay, I'm in the dark. I should be able to get right by this turret. But it will still shoot you and it will still kill you. So you got to gotta wait until it's at that farthest point. Get in the middle there. Luckily, I didn't get shot. Turn around, though. We got a light here. We can take this guy out. The turret's automatically going to shoot the light. And then we can get by without getting hurt. That's sick. I'm a soldier, not a sadist. Come on, you know you want to watch. I don't. Broadcasting murder is barbaric. You're naive to think it's anything but history. It's a pointless conversation. We don't patrol until the alert quiets. Don't tell me you believe those American super spy stories coming out of Kola. If Nikolads believes them, I believe them. Those stories are nothing but Russian winters and Russian vodka. We should be with the others, watching the broadcast. Alright, so once these guys are done talking, you pretty much don't have to worry about them. No reason to take them out or anything. We can just keep going. And now we can actually get to the last part, which is actually where all the action is. And this is where there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to have to kill some people. This actually took me quite a while to get by, just because of the fact that I was trying every single time to not kill anybody. I was using my diversion cam, the one that I had left, I was using my Air 4 rounds, sticky shockers, everything I had to pretty much not get, or you know, not get killed and not kill anyone. But it's just, there's like no way you can do it. I mean, there's just too many guys, they throw grenades from different sides, you have two sections to guard, it's just kind of impossible. But like I said, I'm still the only one who didn't take any damage on this throughout this whole level that I've seen on YouTube. And I've watched everybody, so I thought that was uh, really cool. You are American. You're Chinese. The PRC ambassador to Myanmar. I must speak with a representative of your government. They hear everything I do. Shoot. Kong Farong does not represent the will of China. He is a splinter faction of the Chinese army. All of them fanatics and fools. What does he want? First, Taiwan, with others to follow. Gifts to the PRC he thinks they will not be able to refuse. How is Nikolads involved? Trade. Farong provides transport and munitions in exchange for weapons-grade nuclear waste. Does China know? No. And unless they are issued proof of Farong's activities, I fear the certainty of war. What's the proof? On the computer in his office. My office. He has overridden and reset the lock. I force him to open his computer and forward the contents to the PRC. And our countries don't go to war. Such is my hope. Alright, so this is definitely one of the hardest parts to do without taking any damage. But if you pretty much follow the path that I choose out for you, you can take out the guys as quickly as possible. And uh, pretty much be able to get by this without taking any damage. You can take two guys out really quickly. Wait a few seconds, then throw another grenade because there's a guy around the corner here. You'll see him get his ass blown up. 
<laughs> and then we got this uh, one of the main guys right here. You can take him out rather quickly, but I missed the shots here, so some of them will just try to run up on you and make it easier for you just to knock them out. I'm going down there. The Franco, you're coming with me. Now this guy, all he's really trying to do is just get by, so you can actually knock him out. So once Brinko's dead, they scatter. Let's hope so. Now I was thinking I was gonna try to use the sticky cam on this one or the diversion cam, but I actually got lucky and <laughs> got a headshot. Brinko dead. He killed Brinko. Repeat that. This is why Brinko is dead. Fisher, Echelon just picked out an intercept. Birong knows that Grinko's dead and Nikolads is gone. That's not good. Get back to the embassy. He's trying to destroy the evidence that could keep us out of a war. Right. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this uh, mission for Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Only a couple more missions to go. Uh, let me know in the comments below how you guys liked it, if you liked this commentary, and I will see you very soon on the next one. Peace out, bitches!